What is up boys and girls, in this video I'm going to show you my own custom made actor model framework in Golang. Uh, I've been working in distributed systems for a very long time and I think for very large scale, highly concurrent distributed systems, the actor model is very, very keen to use. I'm a big fan. There is already um, a very popular framework known Akka, the Akka uh, actor framework. It's basically very, pop very popular in... Um, C sharp, they ported some things over in Golang, but I think it's garbage, right? I think uh, it, it's, I don't know, I, I just don't like it. Uh, the way it's it's designed, it's too big, it's too heavy, it's, it's .NET-ish, you know, it's just a complete port. So I basically wrote my own, uh, and it's in a very, very, uh, it's very close to being completely uh, finished, right? Um, and I wanna show you some stuff. I'm basically gonna show you more stuff, how to use the actor model uh, with Hollywood. The, the, the framework uh, is called Hollywood. Why? Because we're working with actors, right? It is what it is. So uh, basically in this video, I wanna show you some stuff, but before we continue, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not already, give me a, a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. For the people that wanna uh, know more in depth on how this is made basically under the hood, uh, I have all, some a uh, lot of videos of this uh, on my Patreon page. Look that out and let me know what you think about that. All right, so basically, um, Hollywood, uh, right now the package, and I will put the codes, will be on GitHub uh, in the description, right? So you can uh, check that out. It's completely open source. So basically, uh, right now we have the actor stuff and we have some remote stuff uh, because we can use actors locally and also remotely over the wire. And I'm using DRPC with protobuffers instead of GRPC because DRPC is much more lightweight and I wanna make this the fastest actor model, which is basically already is. Um, sending messages, zero allocations, all that stuff. It's good shit. So basically, uh, I, wanna, I wanna make, I'm at the point, I wanna make some examples, right? And uh, I thought, why not doing it together with you guys? So I'm gonna make a new folder. Uh, the first one's gonna be in Hello World, right? Um, a. It is what it is. I'm gonna make a main go here. Uh, and the font is, is pretty big, so if, if my typing is a bit off, uh, it's it's font stuff. Uh, funk main is going to be this one, right? So how is it gonna work? Um, basically, like a lot of other actor frameworks, uh, and, and it has all the good shit, right? I'm gonna give you more examples, but it has uh, dead letter stuff, it has um, uh, automatic rebooting of your uh, actors if they if they basically uh, panic out, they're just getting rebooted with a config. You could choose three times, four times, one million times, they, they keep rebooting and all that stuff. It's insane, it has connection pooling, it's, it's just, I'm using my own framework to build a framework. It's crazy, right? Cool, so basically what we're gonna do with Hello World, the first thing, if you wanna make some kind of an actor in Hollywood, it's called a receiver, right? Because the only thing we're gonna do is receive. It is what it is. So uh, we're gonna say type, um, I'm gonna call this foo. Actually, small caps to be honest. Uh, we're gonna make it a struct, and it uh, does not need to have any state. Then we're gonna say func new foo, which is basically gonna return an actor receiver uh, like that, and then we're gonna return and foo like that, boom. Uh, it's gonna complain because uh, in Hollywood, uh, you need to implement the receive method because you're gonna receive messages, right? That's the whole um, actor model paradigm. So we're gonna say func f foo, we're gonna receive, and it's gonna take in a ctx, which is going to be a pointer to the actor context. Right, and then we're gonna, we can switch basically um, on the message type. So we're gonna say uh, switch msg is going to be ctx message. What's going on here? Message uh, type, just like that. And then we're gonna say case, um, because each time you're gonna spawn, uh, and you will see that later on, if you're gonna spawn an actor, it's going to receive some messages, right? It's going to receive a started message uh, if, your, uh, if your receiver is basically boot up in the system, right? So we're gonna say, uh, I have a, a nice message for that, so we're gonna say case actor started, uh, just like that. Uh, we're gonna say fmt println. We're gonna say foo has started. Well, that basically means that we are ready to go. We have an inbox, we can receive messages. And then we're gonna make our own message real quick. Uh, we're gonna say something like type message struct. 
it's going to be some, um, I don't know, some data in it, and that's going to be a string, right? So we're going to say case my own message, then we're going to say println foo has um, received this message data, actually, to be honest. Let's let's print out the data here. Boom, just like that, right? And then we can catch some default stuff and uh, yada, 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 right? So how are we going to spawn this guy? So the first thing we need to do is make an engine. We're going to say engine is going to be actor new engine, just like that. Um, then we're going to say the pet, which is a process ID. It's going to be engine spawn. Uh, we're gonna give it, or we're gonna use spawn with a config. We can give a complete config on how this uh, actor, this receiver should behave, how many restarts, uh, how big the inbox should be, and all that good stuff. Um, but in this case, we're gonna use the simple spawn method. It's gonna be super easy. We're gonna spawn the new foo stuff, right? We're just giving a pointer to his function, to his constructor. And then we're gonna give it a name, right? We're gonna say foo, right? And you could also um, give it tags, but that's actually a little bit more complex. So then we have a pit, and then what you could do is basically say engine. Uh, we're going to say send. Send me a message to that pit, and it's going to be a message. The message we uh, created on top, and we're going to say that the data is going to be hello world. Something like that. Boom. Alright, that's it. Then we're going to basically um, let's select here, to be honest, because otherwise if we don't block here, the program will exit, and we're not gonna we're gonna we're not gonna see what's going on. Okay, so is this gonna work? Probably it is, right? So we're gonna say go run examples hello world main.go. Uh okay, we have a deadlock. That's uh, perfectly fine. That's normal, that's because it's the stupid select. So we're gonna say time sleep to be honest. And we're gonna do a time seconds times I don't know, we can sleep until whenever we want. So we're gonna run it again. Right, you see, foo has started. Is basically this actor started is something internally we sent to your uh, receiver, so you know that it's basically ready to rumble. And then uh, foo has received a hello world. Right, that's uh, what it is. Cool. Um, that's basically a hello world. It's it's uh, super simple, and of course you can have multiple of these uh, actors running around and send messages to each other uh, completely concurrent. Uh, safe right it's it's in, in a non-blocking way but um they're gonna process these messages one by one so you don't have to worry about locking your state unless you basically uh using some go routines inside of your uh actor itself then you, you need to be careful but uh sending communicating between all these actors in your system is basically uh completely um asynchronous and thread safe which is basically com completely insane and amazing right uh, and of course, uh, it's 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 a complete different pattern. We will make diff uh, more in-depth examples later on, so you can see um, how to use an actor model and how to make it actually um, very robust. And um, because you need to think a little bit different on your programs, right? <coughs> but this is all locally, right? This is basically local actors. Uh, you can also have a concept of a remote actors, right? So you basically can. Um, distribute your actors and communicate them over the wire and in, in this case with Hollywood it's DRPC which is super fast so let's make uh, hello world here let's make a new folder we're gonna call this a remote like that uh, and then we're gonna make a new folder uh, server and then a new folder once again and we're gonna call it client right so what we're gonna do is a new file for client let's call it main.go package main func main Right, for a client, we don't need to, uh, we could use use a, a receiver, an actor actually, to communicate with the server, but we don't need to. What we're going to do basically is, uh, we're going to make an engine, which is going to be an actor, new engine. Hey, feel free to play around with the code. It's still not uh, basically ready for usage. It's just a couple of days and it's, it's all good. Need to do a couple of things. Uh, actor, new engine, that's fine. Uh, what's going on here? Boom, boom, boom. Then we're going to make a remote. So we're going to say the remote is going to be uh, a remote new. And we need to give in the engine. And then we're going to give it a remote config. And the only thing this thing needs is basically a listen adder for now. And we're going to call this the local host. And we're going to call this 3000 basically. That's the client. Then we're going to say E with remote. We're going to put in the remote. 
So the engine is aware that we are using a remote <clears throat> and then we are going to say uh, go or start. And I'm thinking to basically let the with remote start the remote in its own, right? But it is what it is. For now, we're just gonna use go start because otherwise it will block, right? And what we're gonna do then is basically we're gonna create a pit, the pit of the server, right? So what's gonna be the pit of our server? Well, it's basically the endpoint of our server. Um, so we're gonna say new actor, new pit. And we're gonna make it uh, this, but we're gonna spawn the server on 4000, right? And of course we're gonna give, uh, the server itself will be the, we're gonna give it the address, but also the name of the actor we wanna send messages to. And that's gonna be server. I'm gonna call it server and you will see what I mean by that. And then we're gonna say e sent, we're gonna send to the pit, right? And we're gonna send, we're gonna send his own pit, why? Because if we want to send messages over the wire, we need to use protobuffer and then now I need to compile all that stuff, uh, generate a protobuffer, but we don't want that uh, for now. So what I'm going to do, this pit basically is an actor pit. Um, you see, it's basically this pit thingy, which is a protobuffer type. Let me show you, protobuff actor, protoboom. You see, it's a pit here and we have a string and a repeated tags and all that stuff, it's uh, it's good. Right, so that is something we can send over the wire. That's why I'm basically going to send uh, its own pit to him and we're gonna see if we receive that message over the wire. What's going on here? Protolint was not detected, I'm not interested. Right, and we're gonna basically, can I, I, I think I can do a select here because, um, not quite sure. Let's try that, that's the client. All right, now we're gonna do the server. Uh, new file, may not go, right? Uh, package main, func main, classic boilerplate, hey. Let me open up the client, can I search for this? We can't, it's gonna be a main.go, a client, main.go. I'm gonna basically copy a lot of this stuff here, just like that. Did I copy this? Nope. I'm gonna paste it in, because uh, we need to do the same thing. Uh, we're gonna create a new remote and I'm also planning to make a cluster package, uh, which is basically going to automatically discover each other and all that stuff. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. So we need to make a new remote. In this case, it's gonna be 4,000 because we are going to uh, send the message to, um, and we make a new pit, right? It's, it needs to uh, match this. We're gonna make with remote all the same stuff, but now we need to make an actor so we can actually receive that message. So we're gonna say type server. We're gonna make this a struct. Right. Actually, to be honest, can I join the code of, um, let me quickly do this, uh, main. New foo, foo receive, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna back to my server. A little bit of mouse action, I know, I know. Because there are too many main files all the time and if I search for main, then it will basically open up a random. So that's why I'm quickly um, doing it like that. So I'm gonna make a server here, uh, a new server. Gonna return a server, actor receiver, it's fine. Server, uh, this is going to be, we don't care. Actually, to be honest, we don't care about, yes, we care maybe. Server has started, right? And then we're gonna say case, um, look at this, we're gonna say case actor pet. We're gonna, we're gonna say server has received Uh, what's going on here? And we're gonna say, we're gonna print out this message, right? So we're basically gonna send a pit. We're gonna send a pit message to another, uh, over the over the wire, to the server, right? Yes, the next thing we're gonna do here is basically say, we're gonna spawn this, uh, this, this, this thingy. We're gonna say e spawn. Uh, we're gonna spawn a new server. And it's gonna call server, right? It's very important that this name is the same from our, uh, let me search like that, right? This pit needs to com needs to be the same as, uh, this pit ID server needs to be the same as um, as we spawn our process, right? It makes That makes sense, hopefully. So we're gonna spawn that stuff, and then we're gonna select here, and we're gonna block. Right, so let me quickly try something. Go run, uh, it's gonna be examples, remote, server, main.go. Let me see if it's working. 
All right, so the server has started. This is basically uh, the message we get, right? Is the actor started? Our server is booted up. We know that it's that it's running this actor, and we also say uh, remote. The server has started, right? And we're listening to four thousand, right? That's that's what's happening on the server side. <clears throat> so basically, on the client side, uh, are we ready? Actually, on the client side, send pit, perfectly fine. I think it's going to be good. So on the client side, let's boot it up again. Let, can I do examples remote? Client main.go. Can we do that? We can't. Uh, is local message. We have some problem here. Uh, wait, let me see. Yeah, I see what's the problem. So, uh, very important is, guys, here that we do go at uh, R start. So, basically, and then we are sending it already directly to this thing. And we need the remote because the remote will spin up its own actors, like it will spin up a router actor, it will spin up an endpoint uh, a stream reader, and all that shenanigans. So um, we need to sleep here. And I think what I'm gonna do is um, make this R start inside of with remote and make sure that with remote is basically ready until the server is completely booted up, right? That's something, uh, but in this case we could do, in real case scenario, this is not gonna happen, right? You're not gonna start up your ser a server and directly uh, send something, it won't happen. So, but in case, right, maybe there is a use case. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sleep for one second here so we are 100% sure that um, we are 100. What's going on here? We are 100 sure that our server is booted up before we actually send, right? So we're gonna do it again. Boom. Right. So uh, we made a new stream router. It's very important. It's basically an. Uh, uh, you can see it. It it's piping the route from us to this, right? It's very important. It's like I said, ch check the, the source code. It's a very, very, very uh, good written, I think. I spent a lot of time and uh, did a lot of research. It's it's insane. I'm very, very proud of that. So we also uh, make a stream writer and we write to this address. And uh, let me see, right? The server has received, you see, uh, we can send messages, right? And we can actually make it even uh, more. Let's do four, something like that. Can I do this? Yep going on here actually to be honest my snippets yeah now it's good um wait to be honest let's do this time sleep i'm so rusty not gonna lie second let's do that or maybe milliseconds times 100 or something, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna loop and we're gonna keep sending messages to the server. Uh, this is the server, that's fine. This is our client. Let's kill this guy and boot him back up. Boom, just like that. And then it's gonna set up a stream and everything. Boom, and then you can see that we're basically receiving all these messages, right? From the client. Hey, basically uh, all I can tend it. And you can make it as complex as possible, right? You can do a lot of stuff, um, but that is going to be for some other video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into my Discord community. And I'm looking forward to see you in my next live stream or video. Cheers.